These are the most frequently asked questions for the second day of review for the Algebra 2 test of sections 41, 42, 44, and 45. I'm going to start here with number 6. And number 6 says that f of x equals 10 times the quantity x minus 1 plus 5. And what you want to do is think of this as our generic equation, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So identify the vertex. The vertex is always hk. So in this case, you just want to be careful with your h value because there's already a negative in the formula. That was a 1. And our k value is going to be 5 in the back. Axis of symmetry is always through the x coordinate of the vertex. So that's going to be x equals 1. Again, it's a vertical line, so you have to put x equals 1. And then maximum or minimum, so you want to think about the fact that a is a 10, which tells us this graph is going to open up and it's going to do it very, very quickly because of that 10 in there. So that tells us we have a minimum. It doesn't go below that vertex. And that minimum value is the y value at that vertex, which would be 5. Then we need domain and range. And again, those come from your visual of what the graph will look like with that 10 up here. And the domain is all reals. There are no x values that will be excluded from this graph. And then our range is the y's. And remember, we said the minimum was going to be 5, so the rest of them will be larger than that. So y is greater than or equal to 5. So just using a, h, and k when that's in vertex form makes it very easy to see what the graph is going to be doing without actually having to graph it. On the next page, we have graph each function and describe each transformation of the parent function, f of x equals x squared. So you take a look at number 10 and you realize this is in vertex form. But what we want to do with this is graph the parent function, which is going to be ax squared, and in this case, a was 1 half. So we make our table, thinking about that positive 1 half, telling us that this is going to open up and it's going to be wider. And our normal numbers, if we put in our 0, 1, 2, and 3, would be 0, 1, 4, and 9. But we want half of that. So half of 0 is still going to be 0. Half of 1 will be 1 half. Normally, we would get 4, but half of 4 is 2. Normally, we would get 9, but I'm going to put 4.5 here, 4 and a half. It doesn't make any difference. We can definitely see this is going to open wider. So we're going to start with this one at 0, 0, 1, 1 half, 2, 2, 3, 4 and a half. And symmetry for the parent function will always be through that y-axis, so you can go equal but opposite on the other side. And again, this is not our final product, so you make that dashed or dotted. Because now what we have to do is take the shape that we had from that graph, and we need to move this according to h and k. And our h value here is a negative 1. That tells me I will be moving this one unit to the left. And my k value is negative 5, so I'm going to need to go 5 units down. So I take the shape that is the red dotted graph that you see there, and I need to take those points that I just graphed and move each one of them, one to the left and five down. So that will be my new vertex. This is my new axis of symmetry. And just matching up the points that I had before. And using symmetry to go equal but opposite on the other side of my axis of symmetry. And there is my graph. So it said graph each function. I already did that. I have the solid green there, my final product. Describe each transformation of the parent function. Well, again, we want to follow the order of operations. So we're going to start inside the parentheses and say shift one unit left. 
work out to the multiplication, and that's multiplying by one half. So this is a vertical, vertical compression factor of one half. And then I need to move it down five units. So shift down five. And that describes what each of those numbers is responsible for in that equation. Uh, and that's in our vertex form there. So use that A, H, and K to your advantage. Graph Y equals AX squared so that you can get the shape. And then use H and K to move it, to um, transform it. All right. Then number 11 says write the equation of each parabola in vertex form. And I notice they're giving me the vertex here at 2, 1. And I think about my vertex form of the equation. And I realize, well, I already have h and k. So this will be x minus 2 squared plus 1. But what I really need is a. And I can only get a if I have numbers to place into this equation for x and y. So I take another look at the graph, and I realize, ooh, there's a nice one right there. That's going to be at 0, 9. So I want to use the point. 0, 9. And that's an x and a y. So I'll put the 9 in for y and the 0 in for x. Then I'll do the math following the order of operations and that will give me a. So 9 equals a times, well 0 minus 2 is negative 2 and negative 2 squared is 4. So we really have 9 equals 4 a plus 1. We would subtract 1 from both sides and divide by 4. And our A value is 2. And that was the one remaining thing that we still needed back here. So now we can replace that with a 2. And it will be Y equals 2 times the quantity X minus 2 squared plus 1. So there's our final product. We use that point to stand for any X, Y that's in that equation. And let's see here the next one. Number 17, write each function in vertex form. So 17 is f of x equals 4x squared minus 8x plus 2. And so far, what we've learned for writing these is that cheater's method of vertex form. So I take a look at this and see that a is 4, but I need to figure out h and k. And to do that, we use x equals negative b over 2a to get the x-coordinate of the vertex. So this will be the negative of a negative 8 over 2 times 4. Well, that's a positive 8 divided by 8. That gives me an h value of 1. Now I need to take that 1 and plug it in for x into the original equation to figure out what k is. So y equals 4 times 1 squared minus 8 times 1 plus 2. Well, following the order of operations, 1 squared is 1, 4 times 1 is 4, 8 times 1 is 8, 4 minus 8 is negative 4, and negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. So my k value is negative 2. And again, all I need to write these in vertex form is a, h, and k. I have all those things. y equals 4 times x minus 1 squared minus 2. And it did say to write it, write each function. So I'm going to go ahead and use function notation. Just going back to make sure that I have everything as it was intended. So f of x equals 4 times the quantity x minus 1 squared minus 2. All right, the next one is the lovely number 21 here, physics problem. The equation h equals negative 16t squared plus 32t plus 9 gives the height of a ball, h, and feet above the ground at t seconds after the ball is thrown upward. How many seconds after the ball is thrown will it reach its maximum height? And what is its maximum height? So I think about what's going on with that negative 16, and I realize an upside down parabola is what I'm looking for here. And if I want to figure out things about that highest point, I'm going to need to find the vertex because that's where it is. So I can do my math 
by hand here. X equals negative B over 2A. So negative 32 over 2 times negative 16. And that's going to give me a 1. So it's actually after 1 second. And then they wanted to know, well, how high will it be? Well, then what we need to do is put that 1 back into those two positions. And that will give us negative 16 plus 32, which is 16, and 16 plus 9, which is 25. And this was given in feet. So again, all of that can be done by hand. So when will it reach its maximum height? After one second, what will that maximum height be? It will be 25 feet. All right, next up, number 29, factor each expression. You guys have been doing really good at factoring, but this one was a little bit different uh, because we have that negative in front. And again, that common monomial factor has to come out too. So we hope for pulling out a 4, but we see we can't do that with the 14 and the 6. So we go ahead and pull out a negative 2. And then you can just think backwards. This would have to be a 2x squared in order to get a negative 4x squared. This would be a negative 7x because negative 2 times negative 7x gives you 14x. And that would be a positive 3 because negative 2 times 3 gives you negative 6. Or think of it as division. Either way, it makes no difference. Now, I have to find, because 2 is not a perfect square, uh, first times first, that would give me 2. And in the back, I needed two numbers that multiply to positive 3 but would possibly add to a negative 7. And with this combination, it doesn't take long for you to figure out that that's going to be a negative 6 and a negative 1. So my negative 2 is out in front. And then it is first and first, so 2x and 1x, and last and last, negative 1 and negative 3. And that would be the correct factoring for number 29. Let's see. Yes, there were a couple of others that I wanted to do here. All right, number 39. Solve each equation by factoring. We have x squared plus 2x equals 8. The first problem is that we need to have a 0 because remember when we're solving, whenever they say solve, we're finding the zeros. And I look at this one, there's no common monomial factor. Negative 8 is not a perfect square. So I find two numbers that multiply to negative 8 and add to 2. That's going to be positive 4 and negative 2. And then to make this set of parentheses 0, we would need a negative 4. And to make this set of parentheses 0, we would need a positive 2. So the zeros are x equals negative 4 and x equals 2. And that one's done. Again, you can check that by putting those numbers back in to the original equation and making sure that they're going to work on both sides. Now, number 41 and 42 have us solve by graphing. So hang, with, hang in here with me for just a minute while I pull this up. Try and move this. There we go. So it can still be seen down here. All right, so solve each equation by graphing. I notice with number 41, it's all ready to go. So I'm going to hit y equals, and then I'm going to punch it in. And unfortunately, it disappears. But um, I have it with my book here. So just hang in there, and I'll, I'll show you what we've got. So solve each equation by graphing. It was 5x squared plus 8x minus 13. Five x squared plus eight x minus thirteen equals zero, and then I'm going to hit zoom six and see if I get lucky if both of my zeros show up, and they do. So now I'm going to hit second trace, number two, find the zeros, and I notice from the bottom there that I am way down at zero negative thirteen. So I'm going to hit my left arrow until I am above the intersection with the x-axis. It's getting closer. There's Blinky. 
All right, so Blinky is now to the left of that intersection, and I'll hit enter. And then I'll hit enter, I'll hit the right arrow once to the right and hit enter, and hit enter through guess. So negative 2.60. That is the first of them. And when you get the negative two and, and six tenths, which would be negative two and three fifths, that kind of speaks to the fact that this one was maybe factorable. And then I still need the other zero. So second trace, number two. And I need to get Blinky back over to the other side. Oops, it made a big jump on me because this time, to be to the left of the intersection, Linky needs to be below the x-axis, and I hit enter, and then hit the arrow to the right one time, hit enter, enter through guess, and that one was at one, zero. So for number 41, again, you know, we can see now that, yes, that one was going to be factorable. We know that because it came out to decent fractions, fractions that we could use for something. Now number 42, the problem with number 42 is that it's not in the correct order. So what I'm going to do is keep my x squared term positive, and I will add 4x to both sides and subtract 9, and then punch that little bugger in. So y equals, clear out the one that I had in there, and like I said, we'll do 2x squared plus 4x plus 9. And remember, if you moved it over, everything over to the other side, you certainly can do that. Um, actually, this will be at minus 9 here. You certainly can do that, and it will give you the same answers. But I just like to keep my first term positive when I'm doing these, so that's the reason I, I picked that direction. I'm going to hit zoom 6 and hope again that I can see the two zeros, and there they are. So second trace. Number two, and Blinky's way down there at zero negatives, just like around negative 10 coming back up. And Blinky is just above the x axis, so I'll press enter, right arrow, enter again, enter through guess. And this one did not work out nice. It's going to be about negative 3.350. And this was for number 42. And let me get the other one. Second trace. And number two. And I want to get Blinky over below the right intersection. So again, Blinky went down. It looked like almost to negative 11. And Blinky is just below the x-axis. I'll hit enter. Right arrow enter and enter through guess. This one definitely was not factorable, so this is a good problem to use this for. That would be 1.350. So we'll practice with the calculator there for solving these and finding the zeros, and that should do it.